Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade, and this is also going to be a speed run through Impact Wrestling. I'm going to try to do this whole video in under 20 minutes. See, Rosemary uh, loses to Havoc. Havoc is now the number one contender for the Knockouts title. She wins via the Tombstone Power Driver. Good decision. Rosemary already wrestled Deanna Perazzo and lost. Um, Deanna attacked her post match, De attacked Havoc post match anyway. Um, after she, after Havoc started to fight back, Deanna decided to powder, but DK ended up throwing Deanna back into the ring when she got tombstoned by uh, Havoc. So Havoc went from, you know, basically being beaten up by her own partner and being, you know, a loser. And now she's the number one contender for the title. All right, cool, whatever. I think Havoc should join DK, though. That's a good idea. I think Havoc should join DK, you know. I, I like the look of her with them. And I like her and Rosemary as a tag team. That seems like that'd be pretty cool. And then you have two guys and two girls. So that'd be pretty sweet too. So the Good Brothers got their confidence back. Um, Anderson said he he's going to beat uh, Finley, um, who, who he will be wrestling tonight. Kenny Omega claimed to be the reason Gallows and Anderson won. And that, you know, these this is the best trio in the world, He uh, Carl Anderson said. Then Kenny Omega started talking about, you know, what it takes to be elite, that it takes a lot of due diligence and speed and metal and strength. And he just kept talking. And Gia Miller was just standing there kind of grinning like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kenny Omega just kept going, you know, a real test of your metal. Don't you dare call yourself elite. It was like, you're really elite, you know, whatever. And then they pulled him away. So, of course, you know, the way I do things, I talk about everything at one time. Later. Uh, David Finley was talking about Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers being cowards. Said that, you know, those guys can't beat us. We beat them twice. We got the belts to prove it. This time I'm going to prove to Carl Anderson that I'm the better wrestler. Then Juice Robinson said words, but they were weird and I don't, and I don't care. Then Eddie Edwards said that, uh, that Kenny Omega was the difference. And since they have a Kenny to make the difference, they need to have their own Kenny. And he pulled out the kendo stick. Oh, boy. I hate what Eddie Edwards has become. I really have. This last, what, two or three years of Eddie Edwards in jean shorts and the kendo stick and his hair braided, it's just been fucked. It's been horrible. Carl Anderson versus David Finley go to a, goes to a disqualification when David Finley wins because Kenny Omega jumped in the ring. It was a short brawl before Eddie Edwards came in swinging his kendo stick and everybody powdered. Uh, and, you know, generally that kind of thing. Obviously, the elite are, you know, gearing up to win and uh, whatever. Who cares? Kenny Omega just has an, almost no charisma. It seems like it's very inconsistent, though, because there are some times where I like him or I, like, I think that his charisma kind of shines through in some segments. And then there's other segments where he's not as cool as he thinks he is. And he comes across as very Canadian. And um, it's uh, this was one of the times where he was pretty Canadian. And I'm talking kids on the block. Not, was it Kids on the Block? What was that show called? Uh, the Canadian show with the really, 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 really dry humor. It's almost British in, in the dryness of the humor. Anyway, uh, probably New Kids on the Block? No, that's a, that's a group, ain't it? I'll figure it out one day. So the second match, P.D. Williams, Ace Austin, TJP, El Fantasma, Rohit Raju, and A.C. Romero in a six-man number one contender for the X Division title. Um, L.P., uh, did a top rope do, uh, Death Valley driver and onto the mob that was outside the ring. That was an interesting spot. Then guys fought off, like half the match fought off, leaving PD, TJP, and e ELP left. Then um, El Fantasmo ended up pending, uh, I believe it was uh, PD Williams with a face buster, a double underhook face buster. So El Fantasmo will be wrestling for the X Division title. Uh, later in the show, the, there was a Swingers Palace episode, which uh, Alicia Edwards was dressed as a swingerette when Johnny Swinger was kind of flirting with her. Uh, she said that she was married, and, and Johnny Swinger responded that he has a blue car. And then Alicia Edwards was like, what that got to do with anything? And he says, oh, I thought we were talking about things that don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is. Anyway, TJP came in and paid off his bet that apparently, uh, you know, he had bet on himself that he was going to become the number one contender and he didn't. 
But then he said that, you know, he's almost guaranteed to become the, ta- the uh, number one contender for the tag team titles. This brought everybody who was in the previous match in from Ace uh, and Fulton to AC Romero and his um, partner, Rohit and Shira. Everybody came in to argue about being the number one contenders for the tag team titles. Then Swinger told Bravo to go to Scott Demore and get this match made because they want to make they want to take bets on it. Then uh, TJP said, "Look, all of you guys need to relax. All I need is the right partner. If I get the right partner, I'm going to be the number one contenders for the tag team titles." And then you know, as he was talking about being having a partner, Petey Williams showed up, and then TJP was like, "I think I found my right partner." And then he says, "What do you think the odds of of us becoming?" The tag team champions are. And Petey Williams like, I don't know nothing about odds, but I know somebody who does. So then he steps off screen and comes back as Scott Steiner, Petey Williams. And everybody's like, no, don't do it. Don't do the, don't do the Steiner math. <laughs> and then he stepped back out and came back as himself. Uh, that was kind of funny for, for the one time. Cause I thought it was going to run that whole Steiner math thing into the ground. And they very, they, they tricked me. So they did a good job. I enjoyed that. That was, I mean, I didn't like the whole, everybody comes in saying you need to bet on me. Cause they did that already with the X division title. They just got all these guys and all of these guys are going to be in one match, you know? So all of these guys are going to be bunched up together for the next month or I guess whatever, or at least for the next couple of weeks. Well, at least for the next couple of days, rather, hopefully they start breaking these guys off to do other things after this. And cause all these guys just wrestle. Now they all got to wrestle each other again, just for a different stake. Which is strange. Scott Demore is in his office and Susan comes in complaining about Tennille Dashwood cheating or uh, in the Tyler Wilde match. For recompense, she wants Susan and Amber to fight Tennille and Tyler Wilde in a tag team match. To which Scott Demore agreed and said, you guys can do it at uh, Under Siege. And Kimberly doesn't want to be Susan's partner. She, she's trying to back out of it. But she's stuck with it. Um, later in the show... Uh, Tennille Dashwood is doing her All About Me segment, which is very cringe. She's just, she doesn't have the charisma to pull this off. Like, I like Tennille Dashwood, but she doesn't have the charisma to pull off being a talk show host. Or to be, I mean, she's annoying in a good way. And she's um, delusional in a good way. But there is something about her delivery that's just not there. You know, it's kind of empty. It's just not, maybe it's kind of stiff. I don't know. Anyway, Taylor Wilde was her partner and was her host. And uh, Taylor Wilde basically checked her for cheating in the match and saying, hey, I don't want to, I don't want you cheating. That's not what I do. That's not how I roll. And then which Neil basically gave her some excuse to how, why she cheated or whatever. And then uh, Taylor Wilde said, look, the only reason I'm a t- tag team with you is because I want to finish this thing and prove that I, that I'm ready to fight Deanna Perrazzo. And Tennille Dashwood was like, great. And then we could be the tag team champions and, She's still just completely ignoring everything Taylor Wilde says because she wants to be the tag team champions and she does not care that Taylor Wilde doesn't want to be the tag team champions with her. So, you know, we're we're completely violating the concept of my body, my choice with this, with this, <laughs> with this segment. We get a violent by design promo and uh, it was pretty good. It was uh, Eric Young saying that you may think our spirits are broken. But failure will not be tolerated. You know, it must be crushed. And he thinks of all of the problems that they have, all the losses that they've taken. He says that he's trying to figure out who created it. Did Dina create it? Did the war machine create it? Did I create it? Who created this problem? And then he said it was the sickness. And the sickness created the problem. The sickness is in everything. And he got a new plan. His new plan is to get more violent. He says nothing will be given to anyone. You know, you have to go out there and you have to earn it. You have to fight for it. You know, this is a test of their belief and their belief is strong. And he says they believe in change and that change is the only thing you can trust and change is trust. And you're going to see a new, more violent, violent by design. So, uh, that, that was very good. You know, um, they, these violent by design promos have been pretty good. I'm wondering where they're going. Like, are they going to continue to expand? Or are we just, I mean, with Kenny Omega having the title, you're kind of stuck. What, what you can do, you just have to trade that damn X Division title around a hundred times. They probably should have created another title. 
uh, I, I can't believe I said that, but they kind of should just create another title. If Kenny Omega's going to be a long-term champion, they need another belt, you know, and then they could just fuse those belts together later. It's just a, you know, it's a device to tell stories. Uh, Sam Beal lost to Willie Mack. And then um, W. Morrison beat up Willie Mack after the match. Doesn't make it, you know, doesn't matter. Willie Mack is a punching bag at this point. Uh, Chris Saban was pretty mad that uh, Moose beat up James Storm and wanted to beat him up some more after the match, even though he uh, he had already won. And then he says that, you know, James Storm was in his corner when he qualified for the for the match. But James Storm didn't want him in his corner. So he has to accept that. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't got to get his hands on Moose in this six-man tag main event. And then uh, there were, they had the six-man tag main event. It was Moose, Chris Bay, and Sammy Callahan defeating Trey Miguel, Matt Cardona, and Chris Saban. Chris Saban took the pin from a package pie driver from Sammy Callahan. And uh, this led to Don Callis. So... Don Callis is in the back watching Sammy Callahan celebrate his victory. And then he's sitting there very concerned about Sammy Callahan. He's very concerned. And uh, so they've been telling this story with Don Callis and Sammy Callahan. Earlier in the night, Don Callis basically said that pro wrestlers are animals. You can't trust them. You can't leave them to run their own asylum. Which Scott DeMora says, like, you need to be acting more like, uh, you know, your impacts you know, you need to be acting more like you belong here. And then he says that, you know, I blame you for what you what happened between Moose and Storm. You know, and then he said that James Storm was out indefinitely. So that means James Storm is gone. Oh, boy. Well, you know what? If he's not, if you're going to just keep him, you know, losing or whatever, I guess it was a good run. Doesn't matter. Then he says that you need to realize, you need to figure out whether you're going to be impact management or not. You know, are you my partner or not? So that's pretty much impact. That's the entire show. I did it in under 15 minutes. So that was pretty cool. Um, I have, I, I like the, the, the Don Callis, you know, Tommy Callahan thing. I wish they would have shown a little bit more of their backstory. Like I happened to stumble across the backstory while online. Uh, let's talk about Under Siege. We're, we're about to do, let's go right into the predictions. All right, so let's talk about uh, Impact Wrestling Under Siege. This ought to be pretty short. This is going to be a prediction. So uh, let's see. Susan and Kimberly versus Tennille Dashwood and Taylor Wilde. Taylor Wilde's not losing anytime soon. Uh, Brian Myers versus Black Taurus. Uh, unfortunately, I think Brian Myers is going to win. They seem to value him more than Taurus, but that should be the other way around. Taurus should be one of the guys that there's featured at the top of the card. The reason he's not is stupefying to me. Willie Mack versus W. Morrissey. I mean, come on. It's going to be W. Morrissey. What else? Who else is going to be? Uh, Knockouts Championship. Deanna Parazzo versus Havoc. Uh, I don't see any reason why Havoc would win. Uh, I know that if Deanna Parazzo beats her, then she's pretty much cleaned the division out with the exception of Taylor Wilde. And I think that's where they want to go with this. So I think they're going to go ahead and go with... Uh, Deanna. Uh, Impact Wrestling X Division title, Josh Alexander versus El Fantasmo. Uh, this match is actually pretty intriguing because Josh Alexander just won the title and El Fantasmo is fairly new. You know, the idea to switch the title to El Fantasmo, it could happen, but uh, it would be weird because Josh Alexander fought and clawed to get this thing. And then you also have to deal with, you know, why did you bring Phantasmo in if you weren't going to give him the title? I don't know. I'm, I'm genuinely intrigued about this match. Therefore, I will pick, I'm going to pick El Phantasmo. I think, they're, you know, they're more likely to value somebody who comes from another promotion. That's kind of how Impact is these days. The Knockouts tag Team titles, Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering versus Fire and Flava. I'm going to go with Grace and Ellering. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be any. They wouldn't go towards um, Grace and Ellering. The sixth way to determine the top contender or the number one contender for the Impact Championship, Matt Cardona versus Chris Bay versus Sammy Callahan versus Moose versus Trey McGill versus Chris Saban. I think they've been teasing Sammy Callahan. Um, so I think it's going to be Sammy Callahan. Um, they're probably going to do, probably not do a death match, but it's probably be the, you know, an Impact guy. Who uh 
who bleeds the impact. And that's pretty much Simon Callahan at this point. And plus, he's got that history with Don Callis. So I think they're probably going to want to build off that. But if the question then becomes, I guess, that Simon Callahan is going to have to become a baby face, you know, because he's a pretty dastardly heel right now. Uh, and the AEW Impact World Champion Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers versus Impact Tag Team Champions Finn Juice and Eddie Edwards. I think, obviously, Kenny Omega hit somebody with the one-winged angel and we just all go home happy. I think the six-way match should be the main event, but it's probably not going to be. Uh, so, that's pretty much it. I got Taylor Wilde, Antonio Dashwood, Brian Myers, W. Morrissey, Deanna Perrazzo, El Fantasmo, Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering, Sammy Callahan, and Good Brothers, and Kenny Omega. All right. So, uh, thank you guys for your time. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace out.